What's going on guys? Legit Cupcake to Sixow. And I'm back. I have a candy tutorial today for you guys. So I know a lot of people when they make candy cuffs, they uh, don't always know how to read the pattern or they do it in the circle and they shift the pattern. I'm going to show you a way of doing this without shifting the pattern around when you do the cuff. So I'm going to teach you that today. But first I'm going to go over um, supply. So I use beetle on black fabric string. That's what I use, but you can use whatever string you want. So you're going to need that. You're going to need pony beads and in, in different colors. You don't have to use this pattern in particular. I'm just doing this one as an example, but if you want this pattern, I will link it down below. That way you can follow along and you can find it. Uh, scissors, uh, a clip, any kind of clip, even like a clothes pin, whatever. And then a sewing needle and then obviously your picture so I have it in a PS touch I have an older iPad and it's on PS touch that way I can mark it up and stuff that way I could show you what to do so we're gonna get started now so wait let me just pop this up a minute there we go so I'm going to just take some string I'm not gonna put my sewing needle on yet or my clip so I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do so how you pretty much read this in general is you gotta follow it in a line. See these numbers? These numbers show like row one, row two, row three. Um, the ones can be a little difficult to read, but what you do is you go up, down, up, down, up, down for the ones, up, down, and then you go across like that. And then when you do two, it goes straight after that, and then three goes straight. And then four and five, everything goes straight after that. I know it may sound confusing right now if you've never done this before, but one, I promise you, once I show you and I break it down for you, you'll be able to do it and you'll be fine. So I'm going to see, this is the first one. So the first one I'm going to cross, and that's a purple that that's, has to be put on. So I'm just going to put the purple on. I'm not going to cut my string just yet in case I run out of string. That way I'm able to measure this correctly. Just zoom out. Okay. So now, and then here we go. Here's another one. Another purple. I'm just going to do the first and second row with you guys. And then I'm going to uh, time lapse it in a minute. So I'm just going to do a couple more. And then I'm going to go into time lapse and everything. So now I have this one. See how I went up, down, up, down, up? Here, hold on. Let me pop this in a minute. That way you can see better. See, up down up and now I'm going to go down with this one so I just put on this now you want the two whites so there we go this one white and then we're going to go down this white and you're just going to put them on hold on you're not being able to see this I got a better camera okay so you're just putting your I'm just trying to get this off my table so you're putting this string on like that. So you're putting it just on the string straight. You're not tying it into a bracelet. I know mainly what you do is you put it on then you tie it into a bracelet and then you build on top. That's not what we're going to do here. We're going to do it flat and then we're going to stitch it together. So, you know, it sounds kind of difficult now, but don't worry. I'm just going to do a couple more of these. I'm going to go into time lapse. And I'll be back. So let's go. I'm just going to go three. So I just did three whites. I just did three whites and it goes up, down, up. So I'm putting three more whites onto my string. And I'll be adding the sewing needle in a little while. And you'll see why I use a sewing needle. So one, two, three so I'm gonna show you now we're gonna compare something and I'm gonna go into time lapse and I'll be back so anyway but before I go into time lapse I'm just gonna go over this with you so see right here let me zoom in just a minute okay see we have these two purples here that we that we have right here those are two purples see we have the two purples here so I went up and down then up down is two whites. So there we go. We have two whites here. One, two. And then one, two, one. So one up, down, up. So up, down, up is three 
whites. So that's what you're going to do for the entire row. And then um, I'm going to go into time lapse and then I'll come back and uh, we'll go to the next row. Okay, so I'm back. You just saw me in a couple seconds in time lapse. And this is what you should have, what it looks like just by following the pattern that way. So normally what people do at this point is they tie this and turn it into a bracelet. We are making a candy cuff, but we're not going to tie this together like that and build on it. Be and I, I, don't, I don't do it that way because there are times where the pattern does shift and you have to be very careful. It's not that I can't do it, but sometimes I find I, I miss a couple things. So that's why I'm doing it this way and... And um, I think it's really going to help you guys and uh, anybody who wants to learn candy cuffs, but yet when the patterns shift, they, they have trouble. I'm not saying all the patterns shift, but I feel like it helps me. And also I find too is that sometimes when the pattern is, um, is too small, it actually helps to extend it to your wrist. But like I said, you're going to see what I'm talking about in a little bit. So now I'm going to cut this. So I'm just going to leave enough string just to do a little bit. I'll teach you how to extend your string later, but that's what I'm, I'm going to pull it um, about, about arm's length, I have it, a little more than arm's length, I would say, is what I have, so I'm just going to cut this, I'm just going to leave a little tail though, because what I'm going to do is, with this tail, I'm going to use a clip, you can use a clothespin, you could use um, a clip, from, like any kind of clip, a binder clip, use whatever. But usually keep both clothes pins, that's why I'm recommending that. This is actually just from a hanger set. This is from one of hanger that I have. I usually use a different clip, but I don't know where they are, so I'm using that. Okay, so now that I've attached my clip, my beads can't go anywhere now. They are right here. Okay, so now, if this is optional, but I really highly recommend it, uh, grab your sewing needle and thread your string into it because it makes it a lot easier to put the beads on and thread them and uh, piece them together. It makes it a lot easier to use a sewing needle. You can use you can use like a plastic sewing needle too. Those are always good. I always like the plastic ones. I highly recommend those. You can get them from like AC Moore. You can really get these anywhere. What I do suggest though is not to get a pointy sorry about that. Um I suggest not to get a pointy one. Like this one has a dull point. So just keep that in mind if you're buying sewing needles to do it that way. So now this is uh, where we're going to start um, getting everything together. So I'm just going to grab a couple white beads. I really don't have that many out, unfortunately. But I'm just I'm just going to give you an idea of what we're doing. I'm going to do one row and then um, I'm going to be going into time lapse again. And then I'm going to be doing the next row with you. So I'm going to just, I'm going to go through this with you. I know like a lot of people complain like I... I, keep, I do it all in real time, so that's why I'm trying to speed up the process a little bit. I'm going to need four of these, so I'm just going to put these out. There we go. So now, here we are. We're back. I'm actually going to use a different color. That way you guys can see the difference. I'm using um, an iPad to uh, mark this up, but you could print it. It's just that I don't really have the best printer, so I use this. Let me zoom in a minute there. There we go. So see where all the twos are? And I cross them off. That way I can keep track of my rows. So I want one. See, now we have two, 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 and it goes straight. So you just keep going straight after this. But like I said, I'm going to go with, through it with you. So two. So this is how we're going to start it. This could be a little confusing. So I'm going to, on, I'm just going to zoom out a minute. Okay. And now I'm just going to zoom in. I know, I'm terrible with the zooming in and out thing. Okay. I want to just adjust this to go down. Okay. Sorry about this. I'm adjusting on camera. Okay. So we saw in our pattern that we need one white, right? So I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to put the white on. What we're going to do is, though, we're not going to put it through this bead because, first of all, it would you would go through all these beads and everything would fall. So you're going to go to your second bead as if you're making a panel. So you go into your second bead and then you're going to pull 
And that's what's going to make your first uh, molding of your beading. So if you don't know how uh, peyote stitches work, I'm going to get into that with you really quick. Oh, wow, that was off camera. But um, there we go. So I put this bead through this one. So we have the little arch kind of like on your pattern. So we're going to go in again with another white. So I'm just going to cross that off. I'm going to go down. Okay. And now we're going to skip a bead and go into the next one. So I just strung my bead on. So the way like in the, I forgot to show you the pattern. With, with peyote stitching, it's you skip a bead, go into the next one. See, you kind of like in the pattern, you go to skip a bead in the one, go to the next one. That's pretty much what we're doing. So let me go down again. Let me just zoom out just a tiny bit. Okay. So I got my one bead on. So we have this. I know it's not fully molded yet, but if it is, it's going to come like that. So now we're going to skip this purple bead right here. It actually gets easier after this row. Then you can kind of see where to skip things, but that's why I'm going to take you through this. So you're going to skip this purple and you're going to go into this white. And you're going to pull because you already have your bead strung on. And that's what does this. So now we're going to go, I'm going to do this with you again, just so you can see. So now we got another white. I don't even need to show you that part because you guys understand to read it now. So we're going to do two. The next one on the row, which is straight. We're just going straight. And then now I just strung on my white bead from the pattern. So I'm through this bead right now. So because I'm through this bead, I got to skip this one next to it and go into the next one. This part I find to be the hardest and a little tricky because once you get to the next row, you basically have it all, all like laid out for you in a sense, if you know what I mean. Okay. Okay. So now we have our next bead in. So I'm going to go through this two more times and then I'm going to go into a time lapse. So on our pattern, I know you may think I'm repeating myself a lot, which I am, but I just want you guys to understand how this goes. So now there's my two. So I'm going to cross it off because now it's a white. So now I'm going to go back to my, my little concoction pattern. And guys, if you feel like, okay, so now we just mark the two on our thing. So yeah, so now I'm going to take my white. I'm going to skip this white bead right here. I'm going to go into the next one. So skip a bead, go to the next one. That's always how it goes. And see, I'm going to show you really quick. This is how we're building our structure. And see how, like, um, you have this little space? That you're skipping a bead and going into the next one. So you're pretty much putting this together and making it easier for yourself in the long run. So hold on. We're going to do just two more, and then I'm going to uh, put this into full time lapse. And if you guys still feel a little confused, you can always go back and rewind my video at any point you need. It's the same process. I'm just not filming all of it because it is long, and you don't need to see me doing beads the whole time. So that's the only reason why I'm going into time lapse with a lot of it. So, But if you feel confused, let me know. And if you have a question, you could definitely let me know that too. So anyway, let me get back. So now we have the two in our purple. So I'm going to cross that out. And I'm going to take my purple. So you're going to skip this purple bead right here and then go into this one. So that's basically how to do it. You just read the two straight. That one I actually put in the wrong. Hold on. I skipped too many beads. That's it. That's okay. So we're in this white bead right here. So you're going to skip this bead here and go into this one. I went into one extra. Sometimes it's hard to do it on camera too, but that's okay. So right now you want your structure to look like this. And you're starting to see the Hello Kitty form a little bit. So you're seeing that. So now I'm going to go right into time lapse and I'll come back with the next step.
I'm gonna, I have to show you guys something on the pattern. So we're gonna go back just a quick sec. So usually when you read these candy patterns and you already put it into a circle of a bracelet, normally you would, after the two, you would start this way at three. But in our case, we're not doing that because it's already flat. We don't have it in a circle yet. I'm going to be stitching that into a circle last. So we're going to be going into row three this way and then row four that way and then row five that way, etc. So that's how that's going to work. So I'm just going to go over this with you really quick. That way you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm changing the color. That way I can keep track of my, my X's. So row three starts with the purple right here. So we have the purple. Let me just go back down. We have the purple. So we're going to skip this purple. I know with the blue clip. We're going to skip this purple right here and go into this purple. So I'm going to put it there and pull and that just starts the next row. So now let's go back here. So now we're going to be going to the left. So now I'm going to take a white and I'm going to skip the bead and go into the next one. And what's nice is it's already kind of there for you. So I'm not going to show um, the pattern right this minute again because you guys get the idea. You just go to the left with the pattern instead of the right. But I do suggest that you take something and cross this stuff out as you do it because it does make it a lot easier to read. So I... Okay, so I'm just going to do one more, you guys. So I just crossed off the three on the pattern, which is the yellow. And now I'm going to string it. So now I'm going to go skip this bead here. Let me zoom in skip this bead here and go into this next one with the yellow. And this also works with any patterns that you choose as long as it's a peyote stitch pattern. And um, I'll show you at candypatterns.com. I'll link it. Really great website to get patterns from. So yeah, the rest is going to go into time lapse from here. And then I'll show you how to start the next wrap. So now we're at the last bead in our third row. So the last bead in our third row is a purple in my case. So I'm going to skip this bead, go into the next one. And then I'm going to show you one more row. And then after this, I'm going to go into time lapse for the rest of it. And then I'm going to show you how to tie it and make it a cuff in the end. So I'm just going to go over this one last time. Just, just so we have it clear. So now we went to the left with the pattern. Now that our um, our cuff is going, if we our string is going this direction, our pattern has to go this direction. If our string was on this side, it has to go the other direction. So you just like do that as a pattern. So I'm just going to go to my fourth row so you guys know how to read it so I'm not going to put that in I'm going to save some time for us and do it that way so here we go
Okay, so what you just saw was probably about like a half hour's worth of work, which you probably saw in minutes or seconds. So this is the finished panel. So now how do we turn it into a cuff? This is how we're going to turn it into a cuff. We're going to be sewing these two ends together. And I like to do that because, like, as you can see, this is a very small cuff. You'll be able to expand it more on your wrist. That's why I like making cuffs like this. So I'm going to take the clip off. It's safe to take it off now. So I'm going to go... I went into the speed. I'm in the speed now that I'm done with the, the cuff. I did add extra row of purple just because I could. Because I just thought it looked on... You know, um, the white was the last one, but I was like, eh... I kind of want more purple, so that's why I did what I did. So now I'm going to go through this bead, and then I'm going to pull. And also, guys, if you did need to extend string, you just tie simply tie a second piece and you extend the string. I happen to have enough, but yeah. So I'm taking this bead to this bead. Now I'm going to go this bead to this bead. And I'm just going to sew down. So this bead to this bead. See how I'm making a line like that? I'm just pulling it. So from this bead to this bead. And you're just like weaving in and out pretty much. That's basically all I'm doing is weaving in and out. And then I'll show you what to do with the hang string in a minute. Sometimes you have bigger cuffs. This takes a little longer, but... Because this is a fairly small one, I picked a simpler pattern. It should you should be good to go. And that's that one. And then between these two. Okay. So now I just weaved up and down the cuff. So now we're gonna tie it off. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to go through this bead here on my cuff. This bead. This bead right here. You can see it with my nail. And then I'm going to go through this bead. I'm going to pull. And then I'm going to take my ends where I, where I had it before and I'm going to tie the end together. See, like, normally this pattern is too small for my wrist, but because I'm doing it this way, it won't be. So I just do a couple knots, and then I'm going to cut my string, and hold on, I just want to pull a little more here, and then I'll cut it over here. So I just cut the string, and now you have a cuff. So this is the way I like to make my cuffs. You can... Simply do a circle and you can go all the way around. I find this to be a lot easier. So I'm just going to put it on. And see how it's a little tightening on the wrist because it's a smaller one on their website? So look, because you did it this way, this expands on you. So there you go. I have a Hello Kitty cuff now. So I hope this was uh, this story was helpful. And um, leave in the comments below any other candy stuff you want to see or... I'll also be putting up oil painting things. So this could be a bunch of arts and crafts on this channel. But um, this is the, the cuff. So I'm so happy that this got done. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.